It's fall of 2016, which marks the two-year period since we started filming Tim Moore Outdoors TV. I can't believe it's been two years already. We can't think of a better way to celebrate two years than to recap some of our favorite moments from the last two summers, falls, and winters. Highs and lows, ups and downs, fish, no fish, funny stuff, you name it. We're going to cover all of it and hopefully catch a fish while we talk. Hope you enjoy this show. Still at it. He's still here. Oh, jeez. That one was trying to swim down to my house. <laughs> it's easy to watch a fishing show and think that it's fish catch after fish catch after fish catch because that's pretty much all you see. Fish catch, talking point, fish catch, talking point. What you don't see are the hours and sometimes days that are spent beating your head again, beating our heads against the wall, looking for fish, trying to get fish to bite, not catching any fish, looking for them, search mode, trying to figure out how to trigger bite. Sometimes a, a 30 minute show can take two days to film. Sometimes we get lucky and we get it done in, in an hour. Other times it can take a long time and there's a lot of downtime that you don't see that comes along with filming a fishing show. As fun as it is, it can take a long time. Just like getting these fish up in 100 feet of water. So have a look at some of the more boring moments that come with filming a fishing show and hopefully when you come back I'll have a lake trout to show you. Gotta find a spot. Pull a leaker out of this place. first episode we ever filmed was the crappie fishing, kayak crappie fishing in the fall. And then last fall we wanted to expand on that a little bit. So we headed back out to the same area that we filled the first one to try to catch some more crappie and provide a little bit more information than we did in the first one. We thought we had the fish dialed in. We'd pre-fished it a couple of times. I'd been out there, had the fish dialed in when well, a cold front moved in, wouldn't you know? And we showed up that morning and it was winter-like conditions, high winds, and the fish were gone. Couldn't find them. They were so scattered and the screen on the sonar phone was so blank that Chuck, who was running the camera that day, we split up and he went one way and I went another and we went in search mode to try to find these fish. Eventually we found them. Uh, they were on the downwind end, wind end of a basin near some structure and we found a bunch of fish and caught some nice fish including um, a 15 and a half inch New Hampshire Trophy patch fish, catch and release patch fish that turned out to be the largest one registered in 2015. Have a look. I'm on them now. I think it's too windy though. I can't reel it in. 
I just can't keep my boat positioned. Boy, there are a ton of fish down here. I do love this time of year. I tell you, you can, you can really load up. There's a charge of fish down here. Well, that feels like a good one too. These fish are relating to a structure on this windy side. Yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a beauty. That's what we come here for. Fall fishing at its finest right there. New Hampshire crappie. Two more outdoors. I'm going to get back up here. we got a high wind today, so it's blowing me off these fish pretty fast. So I have to keep going up, resetting my drift. So this crappie is a trophy in the state of New Hampshire. I would never kill a crappie that big. I just couldn't see doing it. it wouldn't taste all that great, so I'm going to let it go. Let him fight, breed. It's probably a big female. Give it a chance to breed. Give us a bunch more fishing later on. There she goes. Oh, we like it. Occasionally, there's some a little bit of a comic side to our show. You don't get to see a lot of that because we try to focus on the educational value of the show but every now and then there's some funny things that happen and some bloopers and we thought we'd share some of our funniest moments more appropriate funny moments uh, and there might be a few bleeps and here and there but we wanted to show you some of the funny stuff that happens that you don't always get to see when you're filming a fishing show Is that your, is that our safe word? <laughs> That's an order. Small yellow. Wow. That thing is huge. <laughs> Thicker well, tail wrap, get the harpoon. You need some help? <laughs> high though, huh? <laughs> See those? switching very shortly to a blade spoon or the Psycho Shad. I'll sell you one if you want. You want to buy one? <laughs> I got all kinds of clam tackle for sale here. <laughs> Tangle. Oh, no, I'm hooked on my... On me. Hooked on Chuck. Hooked on Chuck. Hooked on Chuck worked for me. Yeah. <laughs> Pliers. Nah. Okay, you do that, I'm going to catch a fish, all right? You go down there and catch that fish, you're going to be exiled to your own shelf. <laughs> nice white meat my ass. Lick trout on Albie jigs. I don't know where he gets his information from. Can't catch a lake trout on an alby jig. Or can you? You can lose them on alby jigs. <laughs> One of the funnest episodes or segments that we've ever filmed, for me anyway, was the backwoods crappie ice fishing segment. 
that Chuck and I filmed together. We picked a pond that was in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. Neither one of us had ever fished it before. It was uh, about six miles, six and a half mile snowmobile ride to get into this pond. The ride was a blast. We filmed it on GoPros. It was just a, a really, really fun day. We were in the middle of nowhere. There was nobody else around. We had the whole pond to ourselves. What? Had no idea what to expect. We had an idea that there were some big crappie in there. But it was just one of those days that if, if, you could, if we could have written our own ticket, it went exactly the way we wanted it to. We showed up and we caught fish. We found fish. Nothing giant, but we caught some beautiful fish. Well, don't listen to me. Watch a little bit of the action and see for yourself. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to get back down here and see if I can't redeem myself and actually put a fish in the net. The beauty of these these long five and a half mile snowmobile rides to get to a place like this in the backwoods of New Hampshire is that there's likely been very little pressure on this pond. You know, there might be a couple of people that know about it. And maybe they fish here regularly, but we there's a good chance of finding some, you know, some really big crappie and maybe some big bluegill. Oh, there's a fish down near the bottom. It looks pretty active. I can get him to bite and see what it is. It's a good sized red mark. Oh, there we go. There's a fish. Not a huge fish, but what is it? Let's see what it is. Yep, it's crappy. Not a giant, but. We're gonna eat fish today. Be a good sized fish to eat. Gonna let everything go. It's probably 12 inches. Nice fish. That's a good sign. It's crappy in here. We heard that there might be. There aren't too many water bodies in New Hampshire now that don't have crappy in them, so it's a pretty pretty safe bet when you're looking for these back country ponds. That you're gonna be able to find crappy. Hey. Hey, how you doing over there? Good. I got fish here. I got uh, I'm on to a school unit. <laughs> what? Here, I'll come over there if you want. What? Yeah, are you on a school? Yeah. Good. Good size. Good. I got three or four good size, good size ones. I mean, good eaters. You know. Yeah, I'm getting some uh, 10, 12 inch fish. There's a, there's a thin, 20 foot basin over here, <laughs> and uh, they seem to be cycling through here pretty regularly. Yeah, you want me to come over? Sure. Okay, we got this whole area here anyway. You yeah. know what I mean? I yeah. try to do this like turn right on that little, on that outside of that knoll. Yep. And I'm, I'm still in 23 feet of water here, so. Yeah. Still plenty of water. But okay, I'll be over in a minute. Okay. Guess who gets Chuck it? Chuck hooked up. <laughs> is it a big fish? Feels pretty good. Yeah, he came up pretty aggressive. I think it could be a, uh, could be a keeper. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice one. That's one of the better fish of the day. Look at that, Not it's a, a bad beauty. one right there. Yeah, that's worthy of a photo. We're gonna have to go outside and get a photo before he, you're gonna send him back, huh? Oh yeah. That's it's a big going fish. In. I spend a lot of time on Lake Winnipesaukee in the late summer and fall, jigging for lake trout. And there's almost, just like with ice fishing, there's almost a community out here of anglers, the regular anglers who, who all frequent the same area. You get to know people and you form friendships and you establish you know, relationships and some mutual respect with other anglers and we help each other out as far as you know, where the fish are and what colors they're biting and things like that. It's, it's a pretty neat aspect if you can, you know, stay open to meeting new people and not feel like they're invading your space. There's really some, some great people out here on the water. People just like you and I. Oh, big fish like this one. And you get to catch a fish. 
Oh, lost him. And you lose some fish. There we go. Last fall, we filmed the kayak pike fishing episode up on Moore Reservoir. That episode was a prime example of the trials and tribulations that come along with filming a fishing show. The weather forecast was good, but wrong. Turned out to be high, high winds, very high winds. Almost, almost ended our trip. We had uh, some audio issues with a mic malfunction or, well, Chuck dropped the mic in the water. Then I fell in the water, trying to get back into my kayak. Couldn't catch any fish. We were stuck in a cove and because of the wind, trying to film. We had audio issues, so we had to stay close to each other. And it was, it was a difficult, difficult shoot. But we managed to pull a fish out, a nice fish in the end, in some high winds, and closed out the show with a, with a nice, 36 inch pike. So let's take a look at that episode, some of the finer moments, and that fish catch. And hopefully, I can get this fish in before you're done watching. I think fall is probably my favorite time to fish for northerns. They feed really aggressively much more predictable and easier to get to. These fish will move in shallow, especially when the water's cold and the sun comes out late morning. Once the sun has a chance to hit the shoreline for maybe an hour, it's gonna draw the fish up in close to shore into shallow water for two things, to feed and to get warm because the water temperatures are steadily falling about a degree every day or two uh, right now just because we've got nighttime temperatures that are getting down into the teens. Northern pike are probably one of my absolute favorite fish to catch, to fish for. Just the aggression, the size, and the power of these fish is just unbelievable. It seems like every time I catch one, it's like it's the first one I've ever caught. It's so strong and powerful. It's so hard.
probably a three foot fish. Nice fat, nice fat one. That's good, that's a, that's a trophy fish in just about anybody's book. I'm happy with that. Persistence, you know I found that I needed to get my lure down deeper. I'm gonna keep that fish in the water. I had to get my lure down deeper. So I was fishing it slower than what I was doing. This thing just crushed it. Let me get a couple photos and we're gonna get this fish back in the water. Come on, come on, come on. All kinds of fish down here. There he is. Just all about how you wiggle it. So unlike the backwoods crappie episode, but like it, is was the Squam Lake ice fishing segment that we filmed last winter. It's the only thing we filmed all winter because of the conditions. And unlike the crappie one, it did not go as planned at all. In fact, I think we caught one fish all day. We had Spencer Jubert with us, who was Joubert, was behind the camera. And Chuck and I were fishing. And the plan was to go on search mode and find white perch and lake trout. Well, we didn't find either one that day. We couldn't really get around. We had pressure ridges that had opened up and really limited our mobility. But regardless, it turned out to be one of my favorite episodes because what we didn't realize was how beautiful that lake is. We'd never ice fished it before. And we launched in Sturdivant Bay, and when we came out of Sturdivant Bay and the lake opened up to the north, the view that we had was absolutely breathtaking. It was distractingly beautiful. I couldn't focus on the fishing. All I could, all I could do was just take it all in. It was all around us. Everywhere you looked was beautiful scenery. And it was uh, turned out to be one of my favorite episodes we had so much fun we had a ton of laughs we joked around all day you know it's what you do when when you can't find the fish and you make the best of it and we had a lot of fun it was uh well have a look for yourself and uh, when you come back i'll show you a lake trout ice anglers ourselves, we know how important it is that our clients catch fish. We also understand that it's fishing, and you not, can't always control what the fish are going to do. Sometimes they just won't, won't bite, you get a bright sunny day, or a windy day, and the fish just don't want to eat. So that's also why we focus on smaller details, and making sure that our clients are comfortable, warm, See those? have fun. Cold pizza, hot coffee. Breakfast of the ice fishermen. We're just gonna we're gonna go to the typical structures that we would normally look for for white perch and Lakers, which is gonna be inside turns and basins. We're gonna move as m around as much as the conditions are gonna allow us to. Cover as much water as we have to, or uh, as much water as we can. Look at the size of that yellow perch. Holy. <laughs> Oh my God! Wow! <laughs> wow! That's a pig. Nice work, man. 
Holy moly. That is a fat, fat fish. We came out here for white perch. Decided the white perch were spot we wanted to get to. We can't get it over there. There's a big crack open. Figured we'd go for lake trout. Chuck just said, I got a lake trout coming in. We said, grab the camera. Whoa. Got him, he Good says. Size of that yellow perch. That's a funny looking lake trout. It's funny looking, but put up a good fight. Wow. Uh, blade spoon. Want to get some photos? Yeah. We're going to get some photos and hopefully we can get a few more of these. I like it when the lure falls out. Down you go. Try to do that again. Oh, jeez. Let's get that on camera. Damn near broke my wrist. Well, hope you enjoyed this recap. We've certainly enjoyed filming all these episodes and segments. But we really have you to thank for it. If you didn't watch, we'd have nobody to film these for besides ourselves. And I don't think there's any way I could talk Chuck into taking time out of his own fishing time to run the camera just so I could sit home and watch myself on my computer. So thank you. Thank you. I just lost that fish. So keep watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm gonna go back down here and try to redeem myself. I'm gonna let Chuck put the camera away so he can catch a couple of fish. Maybe we can get some photos. Maybe we won't. But stay tuned for more stuff coming. Thanks. We'll see you on the next one.